Welcome back to the third day and fifth session of our annual faculty development program titled Pedagogical Approaches for Online Teaching in Media Studies, Lessons and Challenges. This is organized by VSDMC's External Research Committee. A very good afternoon to all of you. The topic for this session will focus to help you improve upon your methodology, skills and techniques necessary for developing effective instructional design and best practices for online teaching. Before we proceed to the session, I would like to thank our chairperson, Professor Siddharth Mishra, and our dean, Professor Dr. Charulata Singh, for guiding and leading the way for us to organize this FTP. I gratefully welcome both of them and all the participants and our guests. Please allow me to give a brief profile of our guest joining us today. She is Dr. Nisha Singh. She has been working as Deputy Director R&D in Center for Online Education, IGNU, New Delhi. She holds Masters in Zoology and Education from University of Delhi, did her research in education and worked as Associate Professor in Faculty of Education and Allied Sciences, MJP Rohil Khan University, Bareilly, UP. She has a long classroom teaching experience as a teacher, educator, in various teaching learning institutions. Being a lifelong learner, she did PGDL, IGNU, MIDT, OUM, and many more MOOCs. She has long experience in teaching B.E.D. Ed, M.Ed classes. She has many PhD students working uh, under her guidance. She has published a book and has many articles and many papers to her credit. She's actively involved in curricular development uh, activities at IGNU. She works for capacity building of teachers and is actively involved in faculty development programs of IGNU and other universities. Her areas of specializations are teacher education, ICT applications in education and online education, e-content development, mobile learning, open education resources, massive open online courses, MOOCs, she has worked as a resource person and facilitator in various training programs and workshops. She contributes to activities of Swayam, Swayam Prabha in IGNU. Ma'am, I request you to please begin with your session. A teacher is always a learner and a teacher cannot do without learning. It's like the running water will be pure. The stagnant water, you know, is not pure and then uh, there will be... Um, it will not be uh, for cons like uh, good for the for everything everybody so that is why we all learn and that is why you have come here for learning learning what learning the new ways of learning the new ways of teaching and learning the new ways of technology the new ways of pedagogy and how to sync the technology and pedagogy they're not different it's like one thing is helping others technology is being helped by the pedagogy because more and pe more people will get into it and it will grow obviously the more the people use it the more it will gr grow the more will be the opportunity for it to expand similarly pedagogy is also will also grow because of the use of technology it will reach larger people it will reach uh, it will reach new heights one of the examples i would just like to share here is like um, earlier we used to take notes and you know sometimes especially in school and college we used to divide among the friends of us key like you cannot take notes the way the at the speed the teacher is talking so it was like a first 10 minutes one friend will take the second 10 minutes, the other friend will take the third 10 minutes. And then we used to collate because it was very important that whatever the teacher is teaching in the class should be captured by all of us so that we are in. But now what is happening is because then information was not so open, not so easily available. Even the library books were not so many. Uh, I'm talking uh, when I was in the school, say maybe in the uh, ninth, uh, uh, last decade of the ninth. Uh, earlier century but now what is happening is information is there for everyone you can just go and access the information it is freely available over the internet so now what is important is that the, what is the good information what is authentic information what is valid information and a teacher has to facilitate that and that is what we say that the role of the teacher has changed over the times from merely information giver to information uh, facilitator so with these changes in the role a teacher has to equip himself or herself for these changes and today we'll be talking about 
uh, how the online education helps in this uh, in this how we can change according to online education what is the instructional design of uh, online education it is instructional design if we say has taken a very a uh, very prominent role in online education why because when we go for in face to face and when we go to class the teacher is the whole and sole designer of the pedagogical approach in that class i know that the 40 people i have in my class what are their learning style uh, what are their strengths what are their weaknesses and how to pace my class and how what activities i can plan for for my uh, particular uh, period i'm going to take particular class i'm going to take but in online education what happens is you are not there to pitch your uh, your teaching and learning as per the uh, requirement of the learner so what is happening is you are pitching at a particular average level so that everybody uh, uh, walks at that pace or learns at that pace so when you are pitching the level you have to be very very careful as to what level and what pace you are pitching it at so that you are able to cater to each and every learner each and every learner who will be your part of your target group so designing becomes very important and in fact in online education instructional design is one domain you have got experts so even if you are an ex content expert say i am a content expert in teacher education or any other area say in history or political science or public administration any area but how to teach that particular content in a way which is compatible to the online ways is a domain of instructional designer and that is why the subject matter experts which the content experts are known as the subject matter experts they work in sync with the instructional design to design an online course which is supposed to be for catering to the target group so instructional design is one field which has got a great from uh, um, like prominence in on uh, in online education it's like for example example i'll give you that if you want to make a house so why do you go to an architect if going to an architect and getting your plan sanctioned was not mandatory by the municipal corporation of any city then will you go to an architect you see they need hum hi bana lete ek kamra yahan banana ek kamra yahan banana yahan bathroom hona chahiye yahan wo hona chahiye etc etc you will think that you are an architect but there is an architect who has learned to design to use the space to the best of the uh, uh, like uh, place available so similarly instructional design is the person who knows that in online education how you can the resources the technology the tools which are available how you can use it to convey to the learners the, the content you want to do that is the importance of instructional design designers and though it is not mandatory as of now and most of the teachers think that or most of both of the teachers or most of the policy makers think that the teacher has enough of the experience of instructional designing but roping in an instructional designer in uh, in uh, developing your online courses is ob obviously adds value to the online program you are going to do so uh, having said that let me just share my screen so that i've got a my ppt so i'll just uh, use my ppt for uh, going ahead okay so now today we'll be talking about the instructor's instructional design and what are the some of the best practices in online teaching and learn so if there's a black box here i'll just reduce that black box Oh, uh, right. So, uh, but why should we go for online? Of course, the COVID has forced us. The pandemic has forced us to do online learning. But earlier, also, if you see the report by the International Telecommunication Union, which is an international organization, as to um, uh, like what was the scenario of internet and uh, ICT across the world, they found they said that fifty three point six percent of the world's population had access to internet and the ICT facilities by the end of two thousand nineteen. This gives us two uh, two uh, like uh, two messages one is that yes we should go ahead because the rate at which it is increasing has really gone up and covid times has proved that that internet is a big uh, a big help big boon to uh, for facilitating teaching and learning the other is we have to be cautious also cautious because it is only 53.6% of the population and the rest of the population still doesn't have a uh, access to internet so what we should do is we should in invest in infrastructure facilitate the learners for having access to internet and then we have to be 
cautious so that we should start with the uh, we should also cater to the low bandwidth or low internet areas and that is why the whole uh, uh, the whole activity or whole whole initiative of swayam prabha which is a uh, television through television we are trying to reach the learners to the dth and uh, direct to home services uh, because whatever is planned for swayam the mooc courses uh, all those resources will be available to the remote areas through the broadcasting also so dth also so people are doing it but the best will be the infrastructure and that way if we see that for the past uh, like uh, Two three years back, or I think more than that, we we had this competition by geo of internet, and now most of the learners have at least one if who own the who have the facility to own a smartphone, they have this one GB two GB data pack. and they are using it for the social media so why should we not use it for teaching and learning why it should not only be entertainment and not education or uh, entertainment as we say so this is one of the things i wanted to share the other was the kpmg and google they are both big corporates what they thought that what will be the online education scenario 2016 i am talking about they thought what will be the education online education scenario in india and covid was nowhere in seen in 2016 they predicted that in 2017 it was close to 247 million us dollars and they predicted that by 221 2021 it will be close to 2000 us million dollars right so see the kind of jump they were predicting and we can see that jump 2016 was the year when swayam and many uh, ugc was also coming up with their online program policies and all that so all that were there and by the man and you also know that there were moocs across international moocs like coursera edx edx audacity they were already there but in the 2016 they predicted that it will be close to this much jump will be there the other will be that it will be in five major areas the primary and secondary supplemental education which is when we see that um, byju vedantu they are the apps which are trying to capture the market of tutoring like you have the uh, student, uh, the learners the your our children they come from a uh, school and then they go for these coaching classes they go they, they a tutor comes and teaches them so capturing that need these byju and vedantu have come up because they are trying to tutor the learners other than the school remember they did not say that these apps or these online education will replace the school because at the younger age even this uh, there is a guidelines have come from mhrd yesterday that the screen time is very important for children plus cognitive is not the only thing we are giving in our teaching and learning it is also the affective domain the behavioral domain the psychomotor which is they say that it is best developed in a face to face or in a primary and secondary supplement that is why it was only for supplemental education then test preparation you have these mock tests you have this test for net exams you have these neat Uh, you have akash and other institutions are there which help you in preparing for the tests reskilling and online certification you are trying you you are come here for this fdp for reskilling yourself you want to reskill you, yourself for the pedagogical approaches for the online education similarly you will get a certificate also in swayam and all these are the for uh, the certification as uh, when i joined igno uh, way back uh, but i wanted to reskill myself i was basically a teacher educator who had been teaching b ed and m ed classes but i got into i got opportunity to work in a project which is which involved wiki uh, development of resources on wiki i got interested and that was my i thought i let me i was learning it through every day i was like sort of coordinating at the same time i wanted to consolidate or structure the knowledge i was get, getting through my um, every day working and i did a pgdl course from igno which was this which structured some of the knowledge which i was getting about technology then i did an another course from open university malaysia midt so that was again i was trying to reskill myself in online certification online get an online certification also so uh, that is that is going to be there they also predicted that higher education we are here and then covid times has really pushed it but otherwise also swayam was there and the ugc also said that 20 Twenty percent of the credit a student can earn through the Swayam courses, and that will be transferred to the credit of the course which he or she is pursuing in the parent university. Then language and casual learning. Today, if you want to learn a new language, you don't have to go anywhere. You just have to look for an app 
or you'd have to just go online and learn the language like you have app like duolingo bolo these are the apps which help you in to learn the language it will not be like where do i know how will i how will i say hello in spanish how will i say hello in french go to the app go to the resources they are there so it is a great enabler it is a great place to learn new things so internet on online has really changed the scenario plus the casual learning it has really revolutionized casual learning if you remember when we started with the lockdown period people were putting on the facebook today we made ras malai today we made jalebi and where did you they learn to make jalebi of course the youtube it is not their neighbors who were telling them how to make jalebis because anyway social distancing was a part of the norm that that time also at this time also so casual learning how do i how do i put a uh, put a screw in a hole what will you do you'll just type on the youtube and then you will get lots and lots of videos to show the process so it is just an example how to bake a cake how to make a char or something anything like that so for that so now the question is that when so many resources are available so if his teacher is only going and telling that okay how do i put a screw in a hole it will not be so relevant it is will be relevant in the sense you will be it will be much better if you use the resources which are available on the internet go through that filter them and the good resources let the learners uh, learn from them and you try to answer the higher order questions like if the hole is bigger than the screw i have i don't have a new a new screw how will i make some kind of a stop gap arrangement right so a teacher can say okay if you have a wood piece then you put the wood piece in the hole and then you screw it will help so this let this this part of the learning this higher order problem problem solving will not be answered by the youtube video in most of the cases so a teacher's role role has changed so teacher can never be done away with teacher has got a higher order role and we all should be prepared for that so how do we design a course online course the designing is always it's like backtracking this is the course i want this kind of a interactive course i want this is the learning outcome i want from my course so let's go back and try to plan according to that so you begin with the end in mind this is what you have in mind and that is how we should pro proceed that is how what designing is all about and when we talk about instructional designing is instruction is basically a set of events that facilitate learning so a teacher uh, what the teacher goes in the class and does an introduction okay today we'll be talking okay we live in india so what kind of uh, administrative pattern we have in the uh, in the country in our country today the students will say democracy then how do we what are the main features of democracy do you have a right to say to express yourself yes we have a right and that is how you build up the interest of the learners so you have there is a set of events which facilitate the learning in the learners you develop curiosity you try to link the new knowledge with the old knowledge and these are the principles of pedagogy we all know about it so we are try to link the new knowledge with the old knowledge so you have a set of events a teacher designs so that is what we say that lesson planning and when we go for b8 we teach in b8 uh, then we say that lesson planning is an essential mandatory part of your teaching and learning and that is how uh, the the teachers are trained school teachers are specially trained in um, Uh, in uh, teaching and learning and the design is a creative for pattern the way i am teaching will be different from the way dr sharma is teaching or professor shrinivas sir has taught so these are everybody has got a different same topic same democracy topic what the way i teach and the way professor charu will teach will be different so we'll be teaching the same concept so it's your creative pattern it is the way you design so basically instructional design is when you design or you you create a pattern so that the learning is uh, at its optimum at its best we call it instructional design and if i look at the this definition which is one of the definition this is a process by which instruction is improved through the analysis of the learning needs you have to analyze the learning needs and the systematic development development of learning materials instruction designers often use technology and multimedia as tools to enhance instruction so this is one of the definitions uh, we will not go much into it basically i instructional design started from it was earlier known as isd instructional system design and the first as we always say is need assessment why do we need it 
पहले ये तो बताइए कि हमें क्यों चाहिए इवन द लिटिल चिल्ड्रन टूडे इफ यू टेल दम ओके वी आर योर बेस्ट सूट और डू दिस Tell us why do we do have to do it? The need similarly, when you are designing the course, why do you want to do it? Need assessment: Is there is a need? Is there a gap? Is there a clientele for uh, for that particular course? So need assessment: the the more valid, the more intense, the more comprehensive will be your need assessment, the better will be your results. This is always always there. The more you have done your homework. the more about the needs of the particular clientele or the group target group the better will be your results and the better will be your uh, effectiveness of your course after that once you have done the need assessment develop an all overall goals what will be the goals of goal and objectives of your particular course say after doing this course we'll be able to know about the online pedagogy and use the tools for online teaching and learning so that is one of your goals of your particular course or say four weeks course two weeks course whichever then conduct task analysis so these are your goals so uh, if you want to tell them about like if one of the goals is that they'll be able to know about the online tools and technologies then you know one of the your task will be that you have to give exposure to them for online tools and you have to tell them about online tools and uh, techniques uh, and then you have to give them opportunity to practice so task you detail out the task it's like uh, micro planning micro planning uh, of the goals then you specify the objectives of each particular unit module section that is very important then you develop the assessment strategy please uh, this i want to uh, stress here is that right after objectives we assess we develop the assessment strategies why because they have to be in sync see uh, if our objective is to give hands on practice then our assessment should also involve the assessment of the hands on practice but if we have not given any hands on practice but we give an assessment some kind of a hands on practice or some kind of hands on task then they don't match and a good teaching and learning strategy or design or the way we do it doesn't say that they even in the face to face also if you have not taught in a particular way you have not taken them to a higher level then in assessment if you ask all the questions of a higher level obviously the learners will not be able to answer of course most of the learners maybe one or two maybe but then not so they have to be in sync then select media for which uh, which unit you want the videos to be there for which unit audio will do for which particular skill uh, you have to give text or how will you combine it the media all these are media text audio uh, video then your animation or images they are all media so you have to select media then produce material of course uh, there are many resources available over the internet but all resources are not free they may be copyrighted resources which are just there for anybody to get benefited from but not to use in their course they are the copyrighted materials and one should not use them without permission but there are other resources like the oer i am sure somebody must have this is the third day somebody uh, some of this uh, resource persons i know personally they must have told you about the open education resources they are the resources we can you can just use in your courses or any material just by acknowledging and attributing to the original author so if in your area of work in, in area of course you are getting some oers please use them because that way you will be saved from reinventing the wheel again but yes there may be gaps also the gaps like uh, you say you have to make 100% material you are just getting 20% or 30% in oer and rest you have to do it so you have to produce material if it's a video it's an audio it's a text material you have to do it then while you are teaching you have to conduct the form like uh, you have run the course you have to do the formative analysis right formative analysis is, is a part of the the whole process like you have given given the course and then you are thinking okay this video i found to be very difficult for learners to understand the uh, this audio was not so good this text was little higher for the or was too simple for the target group so you do analysis you revise as per your analysis then you conduct summative analysis like final uh, final thing so these are the basically the the, the core elements and which you will find in all the instructional designs which have been discussed i'll be discussing very few here but then there is a whole lot of models which are available
like ADDI is there. This is the most uh, common model analysis, design, development, implement, and evaluation. Dick and Carry model, Assure models, Keller's ARCS model of mo for motivation, iterative models, four CID models, and many, many more. We'll just discuss a few ones. ADDI is the most common of the most general of the models, which will be available, which will, we can see its, uh, its presence in all the other models. And it is supposed to be almost uh, omnipresent, if I can say. Analysis, you have to do a detailed analysis. You have to design according to that. The analysis that this will be the need of the learners. The learner is from remote area. So you should not only have only in one language, but you should have in many languages, regional languages also. So for example, I was giving you an example. Then you have to design, then you have to develop. Once you have designed, you have to develop the material. Then you have to implement it, implementation, run the course. It's like pilot study. And then you evaluate. So evaluation is sort of uh, like uh, is into every uh, every of the every state every step of this, and then once you evaluate, you revise, and then you again do the analysis, and the the cycle goes on. Say for example, if you are running the course every year, so every year you must give the feedback and make changes if there is a need. It is not like ki ek bar curriculum bana diya, fir wo das saal tak chalta rehta hai. Like earlier, it used to be like in when we were in school. किसी और ने लाइक बड़े भाई ने अगर किताब खरीदी तो चार साल छोटा भाई भी वो उसी किताब से काम चला लेगा या कोर्स विल नॉट बी सो सो एग्जाम जस्ट फॉर लाइक जस्ट जस्ट वाज गिविंग यू एन एग्जांपल सो वी हैव इट्स लाइक इट्स डायनामिक प्रोसेस कंटिन्यूस प्रोसेस देन डिक एंड कैरी मॉडल विच सेज दैट you have to identify instructional goals of course and then you have to do conduct an instruction analysis what will be the uh, what kind of instruction you want to give you have to identify the entry behavior what will be the entry behavior of the learners they will be all from urban they will be mixed of urban and rural they'll be mixed of different language persons they'll be mixed of age group or a particular age group say 18 to 18 to 25 year catering to because this is the age group where you need personality development for especially for carriers or for interview things like that like this um, so that is why you have to be then you have to write the performance objectives on this basis you have to write the performance objectives the learning objectives as we say then you develop the criterion reference test so criterion reference test is basically when you are trying to develop a test based on a particular criteria whether that criteria is achieved or not whether this criteria criteria is uh, fulfilled or not then you develop instruction strategy what will be your strategy like it will be like um, synchronous like we are having like or it will be asynchronous like that then develop and select instructional material uh, you develop and select the material obviously uh, if it, it's available you use it otherwise you develop it develop and conduct informative um, informative evaluation uh, then develop summative evaluation and then obviously you, re re uh, you revise as i said then assure model basically analyze learners as we said state objectives select methods media and material utilize media and material like methods media media you know material you develop it then require learners participation interaction of learners is very important then you evaluate and revise then you do this evaluation and revision then iterative dis, uh, design models are basically as we know iteration is there's a uh, incremental addition or value addition to particular uh, design we are doing the model we are doing so in this we have rapid prototyping we have spiral model we have sam successive uh, model then rapid what is the strength of these models is that you don't wait till the end for making revisions you do one step and then you are able to revise so uh, basically in rapid pro 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 prototyping you define the concept why do you want it say i want to uh, i want a course on uh, personality development and then what do you uh, mean by the concept development what uh, what do i mean by the personality and all then implementation of skeletal system um, say the skeletal the system you have made a skeleton out of it the outline out of it then user evaluation and concept refinement 
you you give it to the users that i'll be covering this and then based on that uh, evaluation you again define the concept you implement the refined requirements and again you go give go to users and take their feedback and then implementation so rapid prototype like you don't have to uh, develop the whole course if you got your 10 units i will not be developing all the 10 units i'll be developing one unit giving it to user get the feedback okay the video was too long the audio was also too long or the audio should have an introduction also or the audio is more suitable for panel discussions the text should also be uh, done into chunks and all there should be inbuilt uh, quizzes also so you you get the feedback from unit 1 only and then you are able to make that feedback for the rest of the unit so you don't have to go through the 10 uh, 10 units and then you come to know that okay this was the problem and then you have to revise on the 10 units so basically that is rapid prototyping the spiral model as we said that you have to define design demonstrate and develop and deliver so the, basically the five d's it will be like you have defined why do you want to uh, the concept and all you have to design according to that you de demonstrate that this is this is the model then you develop and then you deliver so this is a spiral model which is a quick model and then the success uh, the successful approximation model jo hai ye aapka uh, this is like you successively you try to approximate the final product the final right product you you have the preparation phase where you collect all the information the target group and every uh, whether they are technology savvy or not then you develop a pro then you design you develop a prototype you review and then you this is a cyclical process and then on the basis of that if the prototype is good enough then you develop then you implement then you evaluate and then you come back so it's this always an approximation of the final product so it is basically you are adding value to your uh, design uh, your uh, course again and again so this is again as a, a representation of that you start you uh, design you develop you evaluate if it's then then you move, move towards the ends if it's not there then the cycle is repeated so once we go for instructional design the first said i said that in most of the cases it is the analysis the lead analysis the analysis is basically when you identify the problem suddenly we think that in your institute say if we talk about the vivekanand institute for example you find that your learners are not getting the kind of placement which they uh, they are capable of because as teachers you know as uh, administrators as teachers you know that your students have this much of capability but they are not getting placement so you think what is the where is the gap so you are trying to identify the problem okay they are very good in their uh, in their content but maybe it is not that they are not able to communicate well or uh, their person something is lacking with the personal we are not able to develop the personality or uh, we didn't they are not trained they are not uh, uh like we have not built the capacity for facing an interview things like that so there you have analyzed and you have found that this is the problem so this is basically the problem identification then you thought okay this is not only for journalism but this is for maybe all the students so the, you are trying to identify a need uh your a need for your particular course okay there is a need for this particular course so if at vivekanand institute we are able to develop this kind of a small uh, small short term course uh say maybe online course uh then we can uh, then we can uh, do it for everyone so you have uh, tried you have identify a need a gap is solution needed do you need to design a course do you need to design an online course for that or it will be if you are able to tell your teachers that please while teaching and learning you should give them more opportunity for interaction for expression in the class for communicating in the class like you can have discussions in the class so that will be that will sort of cater to this uh, particular problem so if it is able to you, that solution is able to do it there is no need to go in for an online course but if it is not solution if it's not sufficient enough you find that this problem needs to be addressed this need needs to be addressed then go ahead for it uh then you have to do a learner analysis who is the target learner for the course it will be like our graduation students the post graduation students they are uh, are they well versed in the language say english or it the course is for remote areas also anybody who wants to speak in the hindi or the reg reg regional language also 
So who will be your target learner? Will they have good internet connectivity? Will they, uh, will they have all will have laptop and desktop system, etc. What will be the characteristics of the learners? That is also very important. The age group, the background, the education level, the, uh, the, the capabilities, they are basically the characteristics of the learners. Instructional strategies. What instructional strategies will be more useful? Say for the instructional strategies you have for children will not be applicable for the adult learners. Uh, for uh, say adult learners or the learners of your post graduation and graduation. So what should be the instructional strategy? Like uh, sometimes it is discussion which will help. Sometimes it will be a seminar which will help. Sometimes it will be basically a session by the teacher and then you can have. So you can have a variety of instructional strategies to break the monotony of teaching and learning because that is very important even in the face to face, even in the online. If you start giving one way only like video, then we'll have discussion, then we'll have course. We'll have, we will see the video, we'll have discussion, we'll have course. So they, everybody will get bored as to, okay, fine, yeah, video. So it should bring novelty to the kind of strategies you're using. Then the content that has to be, what is the level of the content you will be going to give uh, to the learners? Like it will be, um, which level, like uh, the uh, beginners level, the intermediate levels or the advanced levels. Then the language, which language as I uh, uh, already discussed that uh, is it for the English speaking learner or the regional language also, you have to see that also. Like, uh, I just like to share this, like people have this habit of uh, being um, bilingual. What is happening? I'm, t I'm talking in English, then I suddenly stopped. Uh, I then I suddenly switch over to my mother tongue, Hindi. Then I'll go back to English, and that is people suppose that that is a very good way of uh, being bilingual. It also shows that we are uh, uh, we know <laughs> we know about the languages. The other is that uh, people will be able to understand. But if you just analyze that a person, say from South or uh, a person says uh, from uh, some other uh, foreign country, if they are attending the course and they only understand English and their native language is Spanish or French or whatever. So they will be missing whatever is being said in Hindi. Is what you are saying in Hindi irrelevant to the session? Or why are we assuming that our target group will be bilingual also? And if they are bilingual, why do we not uh, use one language only and that is why when we used to teach in BH and MLBH students we used to say, say that please try to stick to one language it is not like sabi English boldi, kabi Hindi boldi, the way I'm doing it right now so um, that is language is very important so like learner analysis then examples it should have some examples as to take some case studies which will help you in designing task analysis identification of the activities that the learners will perform say for it is this ftp uh, if i'm taking about the instructional design then maybe i'll give you an, an activity as to you all are teachers uh, then take a course from whatever you are teaching and design a course for a design an online course with what strategies you will be using for transacting that online course. So that could be one of the activities. So added activities which a learner will perform. Learner's performance level. See, if a learner is able to answer rightly, say four of the five times you have asked, then we say that it's a good level. So always in online education, we say that the learner's performance level should be clearly defined and communicated to the learner. It's not like the teacher's uh, prerogative or the teacher's authority that, okay, suddenly I'll think that, okay, four times or three times and I can take it arbitrary decision. Students do not know. No. In online education, transparency has to be followed. It is one of the fundamental characteristics of online teaching and learning. And that has to be communicated to the learners right at the beginning. When you say hello, at that time only. Then context analysis. What will be the conditions of learning? Like what is what will be the bandwidth? Uh, the what will be the kind of uh, resources which are available to the learners, what will be the kind of transactions you will be doing it, etc. All those conditions of learning have, have to be done. Then the second is the design phase. Answer to how will, like how will the content be organized? Will it be modular? Will it be weekly? Will it be topic wise? Say if you, you want a self-paced self course like a uh, 
uh, like a two, two, two months course and the pace is like at, uh, say, I don't, uh, this month I'm very, very busy. But next month I'll get time. So this month I will not study. I will not go to the course at the pace, but uh, next month I'll like, I'll do it double types. So that is possible in self-paced. But if it's a weekly course, and these courses are basically when you, when you it's like a, uh, it's like when you are doing have, have some kind of awareness courses, like awareness about environment sustainability. So they can just read about the environment con, uh, conventions and then environment policy and then case studies. I can go at my own pace. And then maybe there's a discussion fair, forum where we, I can just go and put a question and the teacher always comes and asks. Uh, but with the topical, the drawback is that if you want peer interaction, then peer interaction, say I have written on 28th August, somebody sees it on 13th September, the relevance is lost. And I will not go back and read on 15th of September that what my peer group is writing. So that peer interaction is something we miss in the topical uh, kind of a format. Is it presented to learners? How will it be presented to learners? Will it be video? Will it be audio? Will it be like one week we are unraveling so, so, sort of scaffolding? Or will it be all the weeks together and let them go through it? Will, like how will I do it? Then how will the delivery of content will be done? Will it be like um, uh, online? Will it be like a downloadable PDF? Will it be videos which can be downloaded or audio? How will the delivery be done? What type of activities and exercises will be included? Like say, if we have taken this as I was saying, then there will be certain offline activities, certain offline uh, exercises also, or online quizzes also. So what is that plan? And then how will we measure the learner's achievement and in accomplishments? In so this is how you say it is like through a quiz, through a blog, how they are expressing themselves, through a wiki, through many others. So how will you do that? Say maybe if you want the reflection, you want the expression to be a part of your course, uh, uh, that is the objective of your course development, then what is happening is you give them a chance to blog, give them a chance to build an e-portfolio and let that e-portfolio and blog be a part of your assessment. So then it becomes very relevant that you are giving them some opportunity for, uh, for, uh, for uh, reflection also. Then the design phase also caters to the knowledge level. What is the knowledge level of the learner? What are the learning objectives you have framed? The structure of the learning activities. How will you structure it? Like how is how much of is asynchronous? How much of synchronous? The assessment and review the design components. Of course, review is the part of it. Then on the basis of that, you come to the development phase. You list of the activities for the target audience. You select the appropriate method. You develop resources. I, I told you, you find resources as OER and then not, if they are not there, then you develop the resources. You validate the material. Of course, you are a content expert. You know what material you are locating, but it is always advisable. Even in Swayam, it is advisable. Or in Swayam, it is mandatory that you have to uh, validate, the, the experts have to validate the material, whether the uh, material is okay or not. So uh, that is uh, there. Uh, then implementation phase, where you are actually rolling out. You prepare the schedule, so this is one month we are doing it, or two months, provide documentation. Because in IT world, in this world, we are communicating to each other through documentation. If I have documented, documentation, uh, documented my, uh, my failings, my uh, drawbacks, then maybe the next person will not have. So the proper documentation is very important. Then prepare a learning environment. Uh, you give a conducive environment for learning, then you give delivery, of course, that is the actual delivery of the content. Then evaluation, you do the learning analytics, what the learners find, found to be very interesting, what they found to be difficult. So all that, even that is very important in plus in the online education scenario. Then evaluation, formative and summative, you review and evaluate in each phase, the formative. What we say is formative is the part of learning because you get a feedback. Suppose uh, I uh, uh, like I rolled out unit one and have found and given a quiz after unit one. But in most in the quiz, most of my learners, most of my students have not done well. It's only very few have done well. So what is happening is I'll re, uh, I'll have to analyze why is it some kind of a festival time so that people are not coming in, or they're finding it difficult to understand. So maybe I can. So maybe I'll repeat something. 
I'll repeat unit one, the difficult parts of it. I can do it. Uh, I could do a uh, like quick survey uh, for uh, using Google Forms, quick survey and find out what they found difficult. And you know, uh, uh, like, uh, believe me that students, they come up, if you ask in a very democratic, in a very positive manner, students do come up with their difficulties. It's not like what will be the teacher, what will teacher think and all. They do come up with that, Madam, please aap isko bata diji, or like, please, uh, we want to know about this. We found this to be difficult. And then you can modify your teaching and learning. You can take a session and things like that. Then perform external evaluation, like the summative that is at the end of the session. And of course, revision is the most important thing. Then we have Gaines event of instructional design, which says that when you are in online, then you have to gain attention, which can be done through the animation and audio. Then you have to inform the learners about the objectives. You can have quests, you can have rules, tasks, announcements, overviews, etc. Then st simulating recall. You have pre-test, like you have pre-course pre uh, pre surveys, then quiz, then presenting the material. Of course, you use the multimedia, text, audio, video, animations, images. Then you provide learning guidance. Once you've given the material, they sh they, there's some kind of a, a guidance should be provided. That could be make a small video as to how to go through the material, some kind of a tutorials, user guides. Then you elicit performance. Like you have these quizzes, you give them tasks, you have group discussions, then you provide feedback to them. Like uh, some kind of a reward, badges, scores that you can use. Assess performance, of course, that is grading. And then you have to enhance the retention and transfer. That can be done through giving them more material to read or uh, like links to new websites. Then when we are planning, we have to keep in mind Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's was a person who gave, who sort of divided the whole objectives into three broad, broad categories called as cognitive, effective, and psychomotor. We are basically, uh, right now we're talking about the cognitive, which says that the, the level of um, intellectual skills which are involved, they are like, uh, they are in a hierarchy we can... Uh, the most simple is remembering like what is the capital of india you don't have to you don't, if you remember that it is new delhi it is good you don't have to understand it right you just have to remember it that is most basic most simple and that is why we say that that is why there's a lot of uh, people are against ratification you don't have to memorize it. You don't have to ratify it. So remembering, then understanding. You're able to understand what is the meaning of a capital, what role a capital has. Applying. See, if New Delhi is the capital, the states will also have a capital, which will be the governing centers. Then analyzing it. When you are trying to understand the relationship between the two, uh, between the various elements of a particular concept, or you're trying to compare two concepts, like if we try to compare democracy with autocracy. So you are trying to analyze the strengths and weaknesses. So it's a little higher level than evaluating. That is, that is why we say that everybody cannot be a judge. When we want to, uh, when we approach any expert that please, uh, please become a judge for this particular tournament, he or she has to be at a much, much higher level for but that particular area of expertise. Then only they are evaluating. That means they know the strengths, they know the weaknesses, they have practiced it, they have, uh, they have gone through it. So evaluating and the final and the most was creating. You are able to create something. You are able to create a masterpiece, you're able to create a video, you're able to create a text. So that is, how, and then that is why the CBSC and all the higher education uh, institutions also, they say that the, uh, the assessment should cater to, or the teaching and learning should cater to this higher level teaching order skills also. These are called the HOTS, this is called the LOTS. Lower order thinking skills, higher order thinking skills. So your assessment, your teaching and learning should incorporate the analysis, opportunity for analysis, opportunity for creation, evaluation, etc. of course. Then we also talk about the TPEC model in online education, which is basically that an online teacher should have uh, expertise in all three areas, like the technology, the pedagogy, and the content. Of course, you are the expert in content, so that is always there. Then pedagogy, you also know how to teach your political science or history or journalism, whichever uh, the area you are a teacher from. But 
in online the pedagogy is little different than what is into the face to face so you should also know about the pedagogy pedagogy of your content through the technology and of course you should know the technology you should know the online uh, technological skills and basically they that they say that the a, a teacher should have technological knowledge and the the intersect of the two the technological pedagogical knowledge like how to teach journal, journalism using technology how to teach the, this content journalism or history through the through the use of technology how and of course this is the content and pedagogical knowledge you already have so this combination of the three the tpec model so a teacher to be successful in online teaching and learning should focus on developing capabilities of tp according to tpec model the technological area the pedagogical area and of course the content area you already have so when you are designing a course joff and hebig way back in 2008 they said there are a lot of things have added to it but then these are the eight principles of universal instructional design which also cater to the inclusiveness of the pro course also like from the inclusive point of view like you are also catering to the Uh, disabled and the specially abled also you must have a creative creative welcoming environment it's like uh, when a guest comes to your house you welcome them please come and then you try to make the environment as as warm you do not say that um, uh you don't say unpleasant things and things like that so it's more of a welcoming environment similarly in online also you should have a right announcement you should encourage them motivate them some kind of a game also you can have okay let's introduce ourselves and then say i have int we have introduced it and so the next step can be okay uh, let nisha introduce charu ji and let's charu ji introduce nisha ji so this kind of so that i'll read the a uh, introduction of uh, introduction what professor charu has done and professor charu will read my introduction so that will be we, we will be taking it to a more knowing each other so that kind of activities you can have which would be like some kind of a gaming uh, games uh, and that you can have determining essential components of the course what are the main essential components that should be uh, like um, that should be focused during the course then communicating clear expectations i'll be sharing other practices also and it will be in every practice any every best practices people have shared that communicate right in the beginning that you are supposed to uh, cater to the deadlines you should not do this you, you should do this clear expectations like um like um uh, your uh, discussions forums will be um, will be scored will be graded uh, you have to be very polite you say in the synchronous class you have to switch off your uh, my, you have to switch off your mics you have to try not to use your videos you, or you must have your videos like in one of the fdps or often uh, often uh, um fortunate to be a part of which professor shinivas must have taken uh, uh, he or often organizes uh, he is in nepa so one of the things which uh, i find i really appreciate is that there is clear cut expectations right in the beginning say uh, during the one of the courses uh, in the beginning one of the sentences my laptop is not working can i just go to the fdp through uh, through a mobile also then he said no clear cut no right in the beginning no if you are do not have a system or a laptop you are not uh, like uh, like this fdp courses you will not be able to do so maybe that person managed or what happened uh, later i did not keep a tab of it but i appreciated that a clear expectations because through mobile you may be able to access uh, material most of the uh, you through the apps and all but to design a course laptop is too small a um, interface for you to design and see how it will be so clear expectations provide timely and constructive feedback it's not like that somebody has committed a mistake today and you go and tell oh hafte bhar pehle tumne jo what you did wrong was like uh, and uh, like you should have corrected like this timely immediate if you remember it's like very um, uh, It's like very uh, humanly, we want immediate feedback. If I want wear a new sari, I go to my family members and say, "How am I looking?" It's as immediate as that. So even in the teaching and learning, if you have given an assignment, you immediately want the teacher's reaction because, and you should appreciate that the teacher's reaction is important to the learner, and it is very positive because if the student will not bother about teacher's inter reaction, then the teaching and learning or connect will be lost. So 
try to build on that and give timely and constructive feedback, exploring use of natural supports for learning, including technology. So how can you support learners uh, through the technology, of course? Design teaching methods for different diverse learning styles. There are many, there are visual learning style, there's auditory learning style, ways of knowing, all that has to be inbuilt into or incorporated in the teaching methods. Then create multiple ways for students to demonstrate that knowledge. If you think that uh, you give an assignment that, okay, create a video. So if a learner is not able to make a video, there should be other options also other ways of showing that he or she has the knowledge, say he or she writes it, he or she makes a very good audio podcast, then that should be there. They provide interaction among and between faculty. Interaction is fundamental to anything. In when face to face, if you're interact with the learners, then it becomes very important. Then some of the principles for good practice. One is the connect contact and connect between the students and the faculty. Post a bio sketch of the instructor, the way we uh, like, um, um, my, my bio was read in bit, uh, like at the beginning so that you know a little bit about me. So there also a, 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 a picture of an instructor, a bio short bio of the instructor will always help in build, building the connect. In, uh, like uh, the contact information, the email, the mobile, the WhatsApp, the Twitter, uh, all these accounts should be there, Telegram and things like that. Then email, once you start, before starting, send a welcoming email to all the learners, clearly saying that what will be the office hours, office hours or the like office hours, I don't mean the uh, physical office hours, but uh, basically the office hours of uh, like, say you will be available to the learners between say uh, 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock or 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the evening. So all those mails, all those activities within that you will be answering. But after that you will not be. So clear cut that uh, these are the availability. I will be trying to answer all your mails within 12 hours and all the setting. Set up a video conference so that you are able to make face to face connect. It is uh, always better that uh, once you have made a face to face connect, then even if you are not in a video call, you are on the audio call only, you are able to connect with your learners or with your colleagues or with everyone. Then post a weekly announcement in the beginning. So it's not like that you have made one monthly announcement and then you are quiet in between. No, make it a weekly announcement, make it a say, um, a fortnightly will be too long, like a weekly announcement. Then uh, consolidate at the end of the week. Okay, in this week we did this, this and that. And most of you must have done it. If you have not done it, don't worry. You can just try to catch up by the end of this week and then so, so on and so forth. Then send out a for formative mid-semester evaluation. Evaluation becomes a very important for you to assess as to uh, they, the students are learning at the same pace as you had envisaged. Then develop use some kind of a reciprocal relationship and cooperation among the learner among this this is basically interaction create a space create a discussion forum create some kind of a room where they can talk uh, with each each other not even in synchronous but asynchronous also then it, you can give group projects for group projects also you can make a uh, make group places you can have wikis you can have google groups so make those spaces where they can communicate and uh, it's not that that you have to be part of each and every group. Let them make a group, let them discuss at the student level and then they let them come back to the main group. Because if you are in a part of each and every group, you will not be able to keep tab of all the groups. Plus there may be some kind of a, some kind of a hesitation for them to uh, for them to express when you are in the group. Then active learning techniques. Basically, let them do something like ex uh, a discussion board where they're discussing. They uh, ask them to write a blog, ask them to write a wiki, uh, ask them to post some aud audio recordings, worksheets, some kind of a, a games and case studies you can do. So make it an active. It's not like they're only reading and then when once in a while they're having quiz. No, and make it like the more active you are, the more active will be your learners. Like you see uh, in even classroom teaching also that more active a teacher is the learners becomes. Then you can have, uh, when, you, uh, when you give them some kind of a presentation, say for, uh, for this week, 
uh, insert an audio to it as if you're talking to it with the presentation simply giving presentation will not be sufficient or then when you say okay, why don't we make a video out of it video takes more bandwidth than a, a presentation in audio so and then it brings variety also then you can have the quiz some kind of a quiz questions based on that or let that be a part of uh, beginning of your uh, stimulant stimulant to the discussion forum which is going to be uh, then some kind of a classroom assessment uh, techniques we can have like okay uh, say uh, this session i'm taking so at the beginning of the session if i at the end of the session if i ask you okay, okay what was the uh, what was the uh, uh, what was the most important point i discussed which which was the most most important takeaway from my lecture so things like that what was the uh, most easy point you felt what was the most difficult point you felt something like that then you can have post questions in discussion uh, discussion board then prompt feedback i cannot emphasize more the kind of promptness a feedback should have please do not wait and for that an online teacher and you must be realizing that online teaching is not an easy job is is not an easy job it is not an easier job than the your face to face it needs your immediate attention it needs lot of persuasions it needs lot of communication it needs lot of struggle to let the learners understand or to bring novelty to your teaching and learning as i said so uh, use and basically when you are trying to give um, give um, feedback try to use as many ways sometimes you can use if uh, use use an audio record an audio and then send it to the learner if it's a text then you can use the track change mode and whenever you are giving a um, whenever you are giving um, some kind of feedback please use the sandwich approach we say sandwich approach is positive feedback then some negative or critical feedback and then again positive so you are sandwiching the negative or the critical feedback in between the good comments so that is what we say the sandwich method in fact when i remember the when the lockdown period started one of my friends was saying that the children are really loving uh, this online education so my reaction was of course they will love it because one of the major reasons is that the teachers don't scold in online uh, online courses or online education because that's not fundamental to it in online education we say that being polite being courteous is fundamental to online transaction so all the teachers will be courteous right so obviously when they are not scolding when they are not making a uh, like stern face to the learner uh, they will be happy because teacher is always pleasant but we have to give a critical feedback also that is important part of your teaching and learning or their growth and development so you try to start with the positive comment give them the main negative or the critical comment and then end with the positive of course you can do it something like that then provide opportunities both for formative and summative then emphasize time on task because this is one of the one of the skills life skills also you are trying to inculcate in the learners that deadlines are important and if you are not able to meet the deadline there will be some kind of a penalty right so if it's a 5 uh, five marks or if it's a 10 like assignment if they are submitting on the on dot so you will be assessing their assignment out of 10 but if you are there they are submitting after the deadline let it be from 9 that one mark or two uh, eight marks so immediately they will be losing their uh, two marks so that kind of a um uh, emphasis on the time on task is very important this is also very important because uh your next activity is built on your first activity so if they delay the first activity obviously the next activity they'll be losing on that so time and that is why i said analysis is very important that you are trying to assess so if you are making a course for the working professionals then you will have to give the uh, the flexible timeline or you will have to cater to like say if, if the course is too heavy then don't make it for 10 weeks make it for 16 weeks so that there is a pacing slow pacing um, like so even pacing for it so uh, then uh, communicate high expectations of course um, you have to tell them that what is expected of of them what will be the assignments what will be the level there should be no grammar mistakes it should be uh, right in the beginning you have to uh, you have to develop um, like uh, 
uh, you have to give it according to the expectations. Every expectation that you have to discuss, you have to, on the discussion board, be courteous. It should not be longer than 500 words. Um, every, you have to post at least once. Don't make too many posts. The quality of posts will be uh, determined uh, while grading. The quantity of posts will not matter. You must reply to the posts of your learner, uh, your peer group. Then at the end of uh, every discussion board, you have to summarize as to what went through the uh, this one week discussion. So all that uh, has to be clearly told. Then respect diverse talents and ways of learning. Some people learn at a faster pace. Some people learn at a slower pace. The ways of learning like video, audio. So you have to give them all opportunity like material should be um, uh, supplemented by the textual material and textual material should be supplemented by the videos and things like that. And then you have to continuously monitor as to uh, monitor and support the learner so that they are learning. Then when you're designing, some points have to be kept in mind, like a very warm welcome. I've already said clearly stated expectations, post an announcements and updates regularly, different welcome page for each unit. It's not a welcome Kardia because welcome page is a way of saying, um, of talking to the learners, telling them new things. If something else comes to your mind, you can add it, add up later. It's like, uh, as we say that, um, um, like if you start, want to talk with somebody, then we start, okay, how are you? How are you doing? And things like that. So breaking the ice type, then clearly state your discussion for rubric as to the level of discussion, uh, uh, the kind of comments you're going so all that has to be according to rubric and of course the judicious mix of all media like video audio text all should be included in your designing of a particular course there should be plenty of pictures as they say a picture says more than thousand words use pictures where they are uh, where they'll help like make a uh, make a, some kind of infographic make a concept map uh, all those things can be uh, can help and will add value to your course. Charts, color design, color contrast, visuals, they really attract uh, the learners. Visuals are very helpful. And as I said, PowerPoint slides for each unit with an audio presentation by the learner. Then there could be audio presentations for each unit as itself. Like we can have, um, uh, we can have panel discussions, we can have activities for the students. Then online discussion should be organized into units. Uh, teachers should be consistently and constantly involved in online discussions. It should not be like, bolo baat kar rahe, hum kyun kar rahe. the common discussion forums have to be constant, uh, constantly monitored. And if there is some kind of a people are uh, dist getting distracted from the main, um, main point, then you have to bring them to the point. Sufficient number of comments should be there. If somebody is not doing it, say I was very... I, I'm a good student, uh, you know that. And then if I'm not regular for one week, I've not been doing it. Then a teacher will know that, okay, fine, there's so something wrong with the Nisha. Why, what says she's not well or why she's not. Then maybe some kind of a personal connect with me, say through email, through WhatsApp, and then. Anishima, then, I'm yeah. to... Hello? Concluding your session. Hi, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll be doing that. Then uh, some kind of self quizzes should be there. Then uh, visual design should be there. And intuitive nav navigation, it should not be difficult. Then uh, for grading, do not, uh, do not depend only one assessment. At least have three assessments and the average of the, or average of the three or the best of the three, that you can do. So let it not be too strict and stern while we are uh, on the, this uh, platform. Then uh, the, there are important aspects when you're designing the course. The course information should be clearly spelled out. The course design and organization should be very systematic, logical, and uh, from um, like in a, in a, uh, uh, from uh, easy to difficult types. Aesthetic design, of course, it appeals. Then interaction and collaboration between the peer and the teachers also. Effective use of technology should be there. All kinds. Say, I am very familiar with the video video uh, creation and very good with the videos. But somebody may be very good with the podcast. Somebody will be good at writing. So all that has to be done. Assessment and evaluation, of course, should be an integral part of any course. Then uh, UGC has given uh, online guidelines in 2018. I will not go into that. But basically, we talk about interaction, which is a sustained two-way communication. The uh, types of interaction will be learner content when they are reading or going through the material. The learner teacher also, now when teacher is interacting and the learner learner when they are between the peer group. 
Uh, then we talk about the community of inquiry. When we say that a teacher or a, in an online course, there should be social presence where we are interacting as to the well-being of each other and then uh, not exactly focusing on the, con on the concept, but engaging in uh, related concepts or related areas and the cognitive presence, of course, what is the uh, what is being taught in the class, what is the subject area and the teaching presence where the teacher is sort of is supporting and facilitating the teaching and learning of the learners and the Gilly Salman had gave, given five stage model of uh, interaction and she says that it is basically starts from welcoming and the uh, taking it to the supporting and responding by the teacher in between you have to be familiar with the tools and technologies there's some supporting material some conferencing which like we have so all that has to be part of them then if you really want to support learner in a in a in a online then there are four basic pillars the academic support has to be done then um, technology support has to be done and the um, then the health well-being uh, Health and uh, well-being has to be taken care of. The sense of community has to be developed. Then pre-course survey, we have to do some kind of elig eligibility and technology readiness. Then content related and social and motivation. Then after that, there's a com this community of practice. You must be in touch with them and the feedback of the course is very important. You have to break the ice. As like I said, there are many ways and interaction in the course curriculum should be blogs, through surveys, the web course web quest, uh, web uh, chats and all, wikis can also be used. Uh, let's uh, skip this. Uh, then points of successful interaction, this will uh, really be of help that you have to, um, uh, we have already discussed in fact. Do not uh, overwhelm the online with too much of content. Let them uh, have breathing space. Then if we look at the 10 steps of effective online teacher, you have to uh, be sub, uh, you have to be a closing activity, like uh, you have to uh, give everybody some kind of a feedback, close the activities for them. Go group and individual project should be organized. You have to be present all the time. You have to use available resources which are there. Set expectations, personal collect with each learner, supportive online community. Think before you write. When you're writing, don't be stern. Think. Uh, if, uh, what should be conveyed and then only write. Feedback should be continuous and let the students do their own work. The press practices online, if we say, according to uh, Andrew and Jessica in 2018, their instructional presence is very important. Real world applications. What you are teaching should be applied to the real world. Teach for online students. Basically, when you are teaching for online students, you have to connect to, to them through the online mode. So keep that in mind that they are not there face to face, but you have to connect to the online tools and technologies. Clear expectations we have already seen. Learning objectives right at the beginning we have to convey. Prompt feedback, engage students. They have already been discussed. So Swayam, we already know about it. Swayam is basically... Uh, Talking about the designing, if we see, it has got a four quadrant design, the e-tutorial, e-content, discussion forum, and the assessment. So that ends. Uh, thank you so much. I can be reached at this particular, if you want to write anything uh, or ask me anything about, uh, like, on designing and all. So now I'll stop sharing and I'll invite questions. So I hope... Uh, yes, ma'am. This will yes. be indeed a very comprehensive session. Uh, you have really shown us so many ideas and so many doors to explore you have given to us. And there are so many ideas which we can adopt as teachers to make uh, our pedagogies better. And uh, especially for our bridge courses and online courses that we plan. So thank you very much. Uh, I would now request our committee members, Dr. Devrithi Dhar and Dr. Praveen Singh to please take the Q&A session. Thank you, Saloni. Uh... Since the session was too exhaustive and uh, most of the topics have already been covered, we will take a couple of questions. And the first question is, so what is the best instructional design model to follow when designing courses for students of undergraduate courses? Uh, as I said, ADDI is uh, sort of present in all the models and there's nothing like best. It is like what works for you. Say, for example, if I ask you, which is the best brand of cloth, clothing or apparel available for you, for the undergraduate students or for you? So there will not be one best brand. It is what suits you. Biba, say, for example, I'll talk about clothing. Uh, Biba is as good as W. 
W is as good as Rangriti or Raymond's is as good as some other brand. What works for you? So for instructional designing, if you see that ADDI model, which is quite exhaustive, say it talks about the analysis, the designing. Plus, if you are into a fast track, say like these days, then rapid prototyping, SAM, the successive approximation model. So these are the models which one can use so to sort of uh, facilitate or uh, like speed in up the course development uh, uh, that you can use. But then every model has got its own uh, strengths and uh, limitations. So depending on that, you'll have to choose accordingly. But to begin with, if you try it with the ADDI model and the SAM model or rapid pro prototyping, it should uh, serve the purpose. Right. And the next question is, can instructional design theory be used as a theoretical framework for research studies? Yeah, it can be. Yes. Okay, because this is an area which needs a lot of, uh, uh, there's always a lookout for the best way. This is always uh, like even in teaching and learning, uh, when we go and uh, say which is the best way to teach the BA students or the BSc students. But as teachers, uh, can we say that there is a best way of teaching? No, there is no best way of teaching. It is up to the, because uh, you are dealing with human beings, you're dealing with the learners, you, they are quite as unpredictable as you are. And the, uh, the abilities and the styles and everything varies. You cannot like, you cannot pinpoint it to the last T. It, 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 change, it changes, say for, for this particular area, I may be knowing more, more, uh, more than you, but in journalism, I'm zero. Or maybe I just, I do not know the J of journalism. You know journalism. So for that, you are there. So it is only that, as we say, um, there's a Piaget's um, model that we have this abstract thinking level also, where we say that we are not abstract thinking for all areas of knowledge. Maybe I am abstract thinking for e-learning because I have done a lot of work in that. So I know the I can think at an abstract level. But for a level, say, journalism, for a level, say, history, say, political science, I am not at a very high level because I may not know some of the concepts. I may, may, I may not know about enculturation. I may not know about socialization. I may not know about the socialization in India. I may not know about India, but I may not know about uh, America, USA, UK. So everybody is at a different level. So uh, that is why uh, it is always an area which industrial design is an area where, of course, there's a lot of possibility for research studies also, and one can go and explore. And the last question is, what is the difference between instructional design and learning experience design? Uh, instructional design and learning experience design. Uh, yes. Basically, when you design instruction, it is available to the analysis you have done and learning experience you, and you are basically doing it on the kind of learning experiences you will be providing to the learners. So I don't know if there is like uh, something like uh, I have to find a difference and then maybe put them in contrast. No, it's not that. The instructional designing, you are taking into account the learning experiences of the learners and that is why you're doing the analysis, the need analysis, and you are designing it. So I don't think so that kind of a contrast has to be done. Right. But instructional design is a term which is more popular, which is the, which is the accepted, accept, uh, accepted uh, term, concept, which is there. Uh, and the learning experience design is basically when you are trying to design somebody's learning experience. See, um, uh, uh, you want to uh, design my learning experiences through games. You know that I, I like games and I'm like sort of addicted to games. So you are trying to teach me about journalism through games. So you have made a scenario, a game where there's a case study. Uh, where I have to take decisions, I have to do reporting. And then the system will tell me the, whether my reporting was good or not. So it is a, in a way. So I am designing the learning experience of the learner. So that is also a part of instructional design, but that is at a much micro level or at a much, at a much deeper level. Right, ma'am. Thank you so much. Back to Saloni. Uh, unmute, unmute yourself, Saloni. This happens a lot. Um, so uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am, for taking up all our doubts. I once again welcome our honorable chairperson, Professor Siddharth Mishra, for his concluding remarks on the session. Sir. I, uh, 
thank you uh, saloni i think uh, after such an exhaustive session uh, there is scope for a <laughs> concluding remark is not there but you know as a person of mass communication and media uh, i was wondering that if what the what was the tagline that we were to give to our this fdp which has now which is now 3 days old and we have not yet given it a uh, tagline and as you know tagline in mass communication is the catch phrase or slogan especially used in advertising so if we if i was to advertise my fdp what was the catch line and you gave me the catch line today i don't know if you realized it right at the beginning of your session uh learning the new ways of learning that was the okay. line learning the new ways of learning so if we were to give a catch line to our fdp this is uh, this is what it could be uh, learning the new ways of learning and uh, and the another interesting thing which you said was you see whatever uh, uh, the in the instructional uh, designer is an architect right which as you said right at the beginning of the thing and as you rightly and your whole presentation was about you know how how to articulate the thing how to put it in proper spacing as an architect would do and as you and what would an article uh, uh, what would an ar architect do when he goes to make a design a house he test the soil pehla kaam wo karta hai ki wo soil ko test karta hai ki mitti kaisi hai wahi baat aapne bhi kahi ki you know identify the characteristics of your learner कि मिट्टी कैसी है तभी वो पाइलिंग करता है कितनी नीचे पाइलिंग कर सकता है वो कितनी ऊंची उस पर इमारत बन सकती and but i must tell you something very one of my interesting uh, experiences you mean uh, and this came to my mind when you mentioned about baijus and such tutorials which are happening <laughs> no but you see the raju sirs and pappu sirs who would come home and instruct children they have also not gone out of business despite covid 19 and in fact uh, i owe a lot to our raju sir uh, for my children's education and and when i when this covid happened and one of the things which came to my mind was that poor fellow must be out of job so you know now that she cannot visit places and there is lockdown and this so and you know i wanted to help him out so i called him up and asked him that you know raju sir can what help can i do to you and this and then then he said nahi sir tuition chal raha hai and uh, online chal raha hai <laughs> tuition chal raha hai aur uh, skype pe chal raha hai and in last four days nobody has talked about skype but raju sir is is using skype for his tuitions his personalized tuition he is using skype and then i and then he asked me why are you asking this question so i said you we are having an fdp where faculty members are being taught how to go online then then he says that mera fdp to hamare bachcho ne hi kara diya unhone hi kara diya kaise ka so actually you know the point which you made the characteristics of the learner you know that the learner actually leaves some scope for the learner also mm -hmm. he will also give a lot back the feedback and the take aways that you were talking about he will also give it back to you you know that how good has been your lessons and how good has been your thing i think uh, uh, it has been a very very fruitful day for us today the morning session by professor shrinivas and the evening session from you you must have made a lot of effort to make this 40 what slides and put them all together and i am very sure this slides will be of great use to all of us when we go our, prepare our lectures and go back to the classrooms not even uh, not not just in the covid time but later because they, these are these are applicable in any classroom you know these are applicable in any classroom uh, just not for online teaching but any classroom the creating environment what uh, professor shrinivas also called in morning uh, thank you so much thank you uh, the organizing committee thank you dean and thank you all the participants for having stayed put you know i have seen that this one person who has been just going off and on but rest everybody else has been there constantly telling this out and i am very sure they all stand greatly benefited from the lecture that we have had today thank you nothing more to add to this thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you ma'am it was very beneficial for us thank you thank so much you. thank you